Yeah, so the project started in 2020 with the Innovative Farmers Trust um, and also the organisations at the bottom of the slide were involved. And then in 2022, we secured funding from the Elizabeth Gilmore Charitable Foundation, which allowed us to continue the work. So I'll be going through what living mulches are and why I use them. The role of living mulches in regenerative, organic and conventional systems. What we found so far in the Living Mulch project, um, what's next for Living Mulches and how you can get involved. So the definition of Living Mulches is a perennial cover crop that is well established at the time of cash crop planting. So an example of this could be a white clover sward with winter wheat direct drilled into it. Um, and as I said, it's ideal for organic and conventional systems. So the common establishment method is to under sow it into a companion crop such as spring barley or it can be relayed into crop into winter wheat. Um, it also may be sown at the end of summer before winter cereal establishment um, and then with legumes it can be either broadcast or drilled into rows. So what are the advantages of using living mulches? So the clover itself acts as a designated weed, so it suppresses other weeds. Um, it's nitrogen accumulating through the nitrogen fixation process, which also mobilises other nutrients within the soil. It reduces tillage to enhance the soil physical characteristics. Um, for conventional farmers, it reduces the reliance on glyphosate as well as acting as a winter cover crop, so reducing the cost of seed. And for organic farmers, um, it's a system which allows for less intensive tillage, which saves on labour costs, machinery wear and tear and fuel. Um, so living mulches protect the soil, which is important for mitigating climate extremes, which is obviously going to become much more important. It increases the soil biology, so this increases the biodiversity both above and below the ground. And it's a self-regulating system, so it reduces pests and disease. And it also acts as a green manure function, which improves the soil structure and the nutrients within the soil. So, so far in the Living Mulch Farmer Trials, we've established a semi-permanent forage legume, which is the clover, as an understory to cash crop production. So these have been oats and barley. And the clover that we have used is a wild white clover and small medium leaf white clover in a 70-30 proportion. So there were six farms involved in 2020 and 21, and then six more farms in 21 and 22. And there were varying levels of success in the trials. Um, so due to the dry spring in 2020 and 21, we had several trial failures. Um, but in 2022, we had two successful trials in Oxfordshire and Shropshire. And then we've been doing assessments throughout the growing stages um, at different growth stages. And then at harvest, we've collected the crop yield um, data. And then in the autumn, we've been doing soil health tests as well. So here you can see three trials done in 2021 and it's assessing the grain yield. So the living mulch trial, there was a 40% um, yield penalty compared to the trial. Um, and the inclusion of the direct drill shows that half the yield penalty comes from the no-till system. Um, so a way of getting around this is limiting the clover competition during the critical period of the crop. And then one of the soil health tests that we have done is measuring the number of earthworms. Um, and as you can see from this box plot, the number of earthworms in the mulch was much higher than the control. And we also found that the organic matter content and the nitrogen content in the living mulch was a lot higher than in the control strip. So this is Mark Lee from Green Acres Farm in Shropshire and he's been one of the main farmers involved in the trials. And he's a certified organic cereal producer with sheep. So he uses the living mulches to extend his rotation to a five year rotation while also reducing the frequency of tillage. So here is a diagram of Mark's five year rotation. 
So it starts with the conventional tillage of spring wheat, followed by the conventional tillage of winter oats. And then the next year, spring wheat is under sown with clover and the clover lay is established. And then the true living mulch year is when the winter oats are direct drilled into the clover lay. And then the following season, this clover lay is then grazed. So why use living mulches if there is a 40% yield penalty? Well, Mark Lee has found that he's had a 20% reduction in inputs in, when using living mulches, and it's also allowed him to extend his rotation to make a five-year rotation. So this increases his yield and also means that he accumulates more nitrogen within the soil. It reduces leaching, so there's the possibility that water companies would be interested in funding research in the future. And then the nitrogen, nitrogen assimilation benefits for the crop. So this may mean that the protein content of wheat, for example, will be increased. So what's next for the Living Mulchers project? So we're going to continue monitoring the Living Mulch trials. Just this week, we're up at Mark Lee's farm doing soil assessments. And we're also looking to expand the network. So this is going geographically further and also looking to conventional and organic farmers to get involved with the trials. We're looking to do a formalised literature review to place our study in the wider context and also looking to do crop modelling to stimulate growth and soil carbon and nitrogen dynamics in the living mulch system. And we're also interested in getting growers involved in organic horticulture. So we like to ask the questions of if they're already being used in the UK, the challenges with this and also the possible benefits. So if this is you or you'd be interested in implementing living mulches, then please do get in touch. And many thanks to Julia Cooper and Matt Smee from the Organic Research Centre. And any questions? <laughs> What's it's a really silly question. Mm. What scale do you need people to be if they're interested in um, being part of the research? Is it like for larger farms that have the use of large machinery or would you...? We're also interested in human scale as well. Um, anyone that wants to get involved because we've really got nothing at the moment in horticulture. So okay. yeah, we'd be interested in anything at the moment. What causes the, can you tell us more about the 40% reduction in the yield? Yeah, in the yeah it's the competition with the clover. Okay. Yeah, um, so it's, there's quite a critical period when the crop needs to be sown for the clover not to be too well established to, yeah, cause a loss in yield. But so, so the net gain is in the health of the soil over a yeah. long time? Yeah, and like Mark Leeds found a 20% reduction in inputs and then also it's hard to quantify but like the soil improvement, the reduced leaching, um, the accumulated nitrogen will have long-term benefits. And so, so what's the nutritional value of the crop at the end? Of we haven't, no, we've just assessed the crop for diseases and how it's doing at each growth stage but not the nutritional profiles of it yet. So, Thank you. That's okay. Right. From from your experience and from the other research in this area, yeah. would it suggest that clover could ever be beneficial for crops it's growing next to if they have a very different root system? So, for instance, tree crops or um, perennial crops? Yeah, we haven't done any research into it, um, but I can only think that they would. Um, just through Be yeah yeah just through the way that they improve the soil health and accumulate nitrogen but be so. less competitive of the, in terms of immediate yields oh uh, with the i mean would you have that drop in yield when you've got very different root systems um yeah possibly i don't know it's something that we think we need to look into so yeah, yeah. So can I just ask, is that, some of, is that some of the questions? I mean, this is one thing that Izzy did start with the horticultural section, is the fact that what are your questions? What do you want to find out? And I mean, if there are, if there are questions at the fact that you feel that living mulches is, is not addressing and you feel that it's something that needs to be part of living mulches going forward for the next couple of years, please come and stop by, because I'm here for two days, here for the next couple of days. Please stop by, say, look, we'd like to know if this can be addressed. If, 
could we can actually then format our research around that so we'd really like to and this is here for yeah. the day as well so please please do speak to them